Oh boy, I have got a show for you. Welcome here to my channel here on YouTube. Uh, my name is Brittany and I'm so glad that you have arrived here today on my channel. I'm here to talk about the things that I love and it's all related to wool. Anything that I can get my hands on to keep me cozy and warm here in the far north of Canada in the Yukon Territory. And well, as I've said, I've got lots to share with you today. I have been really enjoying my spinning and my knitting. All knitting. I did work a little bit on a crochet blanket, but uh, alas, everything is all knitting and I have quite a bit to share with you. So I hope you can settle in, grab yourself a coffee or tea. I don't need to tell you that, but anyways, get yourself settled. I'm, I hope that I can provide for you some inspiration, entertainment, um, and something to help you during your own crafting, wherever you are and whatever time of day or whichever part of the world you are in. So uh, before I begin, I just want to mention that at the end of this video, there will be some footage and the footage is going to be, fingers crossed, um, me in a few days time in, in Caroline, Alberta with Sierra um, of the Crocus Country Shepherdess flock and I'll be going down there with my two kids, Calvin and Sybil, to go for uh, shearing day. So we'll get to visit with them, see all the sheep again and check out all their wool. I'm so so excited. So if you would like to stick around till the end to see that footage, please go ahead. Um, the other thing is in my videos for the last several um, episodes, I have been putting in timestamps so that you can uh, fast forward and I will do my best to add descriptions to them so that you get the idea of what the context is. So like your finished objects, your whips. Um, often I'll put timestamps in for each item like so then you don't have to go searching within that specific timestamp. So um, if that's something that excites you, I am so happy to be able to provide that. Um, uh, my business is <laughs> I'm so bad with introductions. Um, my business name is Crux Fibers and that's why this channel is called Crux Fibers. Um, I dabble in all things wool, especially Canadian wool. And over on Instagram, you can find a lot of content that I put out there of just the regular living life and the things that I dabble in, I make and I hand dye yarn and fiber and make blended fibers when I can. <laughs> but most of the times it's um, the dyeing of the wool and uh, if you are new to my low mileage wool, I will get into that a little bit later on in the, in the episode. So I think that's about it. So I can't wait to share with you all of the wonderful things. So coming right up is some finished objects. I need to grab a coffee. There we go. All right, so I am wearing my first finished object. Actually, it's not the first, but we'll start with it because I'm wearing it. This is the Wayworth cowl, and this is designed by Bella of the 100 Acre Wool. She has a podcast here on YouTube, and she's also present on Instagram. She's been dabbling in, I say dabble a lot. She has been exploring her creative journey in designing and specifically with unspun yarns, her own hand spun, and other other yarns that she gets a hold of. Anyways, this is a type of cowl that you basically knit type, a type of triangle and there is a little bit of seaming involved, but I'll take it off. Initially when I casted this on, I was using some new tenon and I was actually using, oops, this color here. Um, Butterflog, I think it's called. I initially was using that with a, a green one, but the pattern is written for a single strand of uh, unspun, and the ones that I had were a lot more slick, very thin, and I just didn't feel like it was doing the pattern very good, and the, also the gauge was too small. So I put that aside and recast it on with my Canadian unspun. Uh, this is with a dark gray, which is more leaning brown. There's lots of um, brown, natural brown fibers in there. And then the natural white, which is more of an off-white. So this was really enjoyable to knit. Um, you have some very interesting and engaging stitch patterns. 
to create that nice diamond effect. I don't know. It's really it's really nice. And this is the back. I had to quite I had to block this quite aggressively. I, with most of the things that I block, I put it in like very hot water um, and don't agitate. And I've had no felting, so um, yeah, I really really love this. this. Is the back with all of the mosaic floats. So it's not color work; it's mosaic. And this whole thing weighs 83 grams. 83 grams. So if you do have some unspun plates hanging around, like, you know, half plates, I think you would be fine. Maybe you would need just a little bit more of one color. So yeah, it just like slips over your head. I've knit a few of these types of cowls. Oops. The other ones are by Andrew Mowry, the um, shifty cowl, which I've done multiple times and gift away all the time. But this one's going to be a store sample, shop sample, and also for my pleasure. Anyway, so I, if you notice, I, because this color here, um, Bella designed it with just two colors, but when I saw these, there's a, I don't think I can show you. When I saw the pattern um, laid out, I, th I really thought I, I would love to have like just a pop of color, but, it does get a little hidden when I'm wearing it, so it might not have been the best of choices right there, maybe. I got cut off, and I was saying it might not have been the best choice for this color here, but I still like it, so it's there, and I know it's there, and yeah. So I don't actually remember when this pattern will be released, but it's in testing with um, others, and there's some nice samples, so keep your eye out for Bella's um, pattern drop, so I really enjoyed testing that. Um, I'm wearing it with my Mayma cardigan, which I knit ages ago. This is by Pippin Pin or Knox. I think it's by Pippin Pin. And I used Comfy Cozy Knits um, Merino Singles. So I knit this quite a bit. A little while ago. And green, this is my favorite shade of green. So I love that. And I'm also wearing my Free Knits, which you have seen. Or if you have not seen, they are, have been featured on the channel a, a few times. Um, so... Moving on, the other test knit, I don't know if I said I did too, but I did do another test knit, and this one was for Autumn Poppy Designs. It was a um, top-down hat pattern that she designed, which I chose to knit in my hand spun. So, in my last video, I was winding up some yarn. Uh, I think it was either at the beginning or at the end, and that was this yarn here. I was getting ready to cast on. Um, it's a really nice pattern. It's the kind of pattern that could hit, fit the whole family. Um, not, sorry, it's a pattern to fit the whole family. So, if that makes sense. Yeah. You cast on a certain amount of stitches, and then you increase for a certain size of head, and then you will continue on. And it's um broken rib stitch pattern. And it has a nice slouch, so I will put that on. This hand spun is a blend of fiber. So it's, yeah, it's got a nice little slouch. I do like a slouchy hat. I like a beanie, but I also like a, sl a slouchy hat. And this is my kind of color. Um, this hand spun contains Kiviet um, Canadian Merino, which is not, Merino just is like a type of, classification of fine wool so it's a fine wool and there's silk in it I also I spun one single with the blend of red and then the other single was a silk hanky that was really fun to work with so if you can ever get your hands on a silk hanky it literally it literally looks like a hanky um, mulberry silk and you have to stretch it out silk is incredibly strong <laughs> and it's a challenge to spin uh, my fingers were so tired but anyways I I I um one of the silk hankies I didn't have enough so I had to continue on with another one but it meant that I had two skeins of this yarn uh, one was more burgundy red and then one was more golden so I, I alternated the um the colors throughout and it was it's really lovely I I'll just show it again um 
But there's these pops of gold. Yeah, just pops of gold and it's really nice. So I knit the small adult or the yeah, I think it's called the small small adult size. Um, and it stretched and it fits perfectly well for me. I can even roll it up, but I usually like a double brim. So if I didn't want to wear it slouchy, I can do that. So she's released the pattern, and this is called the, what is this called again? Oh dear. Colonnade Beanie. So I was helping, I was helping Paula name the pattern. She is, she was born in Poland, and so she's got lots of Polish background, and I said, well, what is something, is there any architecture or whatever in the country that maybe this looks that this could be reminiscent of and so I went searching online and found their um, like the capitals library and maybe it was called the colonnade or or maybe the structure of the building is called a colonnade and so it's spelled a little bit different with this double n anyways I'll link it below and and uh, the building actually looks like these this pillars and so with this broken rib I was just like it reminds me of the pillars of that building in Poland so maybe you could you know, relate it back to that. So she did. And yeah, I'm very happy with this hat and I'm always very happy to support my friend Paula. So if you want to do, if you would like a hat pattern that has the same stitch cast on for anybody and you want to make it without having to look at a pattern or, um, mm, yeah, or you just want to have a, a good pattern in your repertoire to refer back to for making something for the whole family or whatever size it's a good pattern to go for so yeah and the fibers were blended by my friend Melly my good friend and she gave me the fibers to spin for my birthday so go check out the pattern if you like that you should go snag it right away or add it to your queue um, I have been knitting a lot of hats and the reason for all the hats is well, this one was a test knit I wanted to do for Paula, but I also really wanted a red hat. I don't own one, so, and I love red. It makes me feel happy, so. Um, I had my low mileage wool arrive uh, since the last episode, or maybe it had, I can't remember. Mm. Oh dear, that's the coffee maker, apologies. So, um, every time I get a batch of low mileage wool back, I knit for Sierra and you saw the sweater that I mailed off to her and she's received it and she loves it. It fits so good. I'm so, so thrilled because that's only the second time I've ever knit a sweater for anybody. And so this time I said, um, you know, would the kids like some hats? So she said, yes. Yeah. So what we did was I've got three hats here, one for her husband, one for her daughter and one for her son. And so what's special about these hats is the white one is uh, Sierra's son's favorite sheep. So in this yarn blend is uh, one of the used weathers, so Barbara's weather ram, um, and Elsa. Elsa is a ewe who's soon to be a mom as well, actually. She's a, a yearling. She is beautiful, like literally crazy like if you took a paintbrush and you just painted on just like long eyelashes she's um, she looks like an Elsa <laughs> if you've seen Frozen um, so this is the first one and it is like this very beautiful pearly shiny yarn it is just oh it's so lovely I really enjoyed working with this yarn um, I don't work with a very lot of uh, with a lot of fine wools and so if you're used to like super fine like 17 micron merino this is probably gonna feel like a bfl to you blue face lester because well that's in the bloodline but the this flock is gotland and blue face lester cross breeds so they feel so soft and they're lamb's wool these ones are lamb's wool these, these two right here and so this cold gray tone one 
This is she. Um, this is from Sierra's son's favorite sheep, named Ash. She's a very very friendly ewe. I met her the last time I was there, and it's blended with um, Frost's wool. Frost is a mature ewe, and I don't know. I, I don't know if they're related, Ash and Frost, but the yarn is very complimentary. It's really really lovely. Um, and I, I, this one as well is just was really lovely to work with, really nice. And I wanted to show you just quickly just how much this type of wool blooms. This is my Bolton Pass hat that you've seen before. It looks fuzzy and which not, but the thing is, after you block these this wool, it just continues to get better and better. And uh, if you hold it up to like the light, you can see through the fabric, but you can see where the fibers have all filled in and um, made it so much more thermal and warm so even though it's a really thin hat it's actually pretty pretty warm and it is a denser fiber so it's not like it's not your really fine wools that can keep the wind from going in and out but it's it's insulating it's just pure magic <laughs> anyways moving on this is this one I haven't blocked yet but this one's for Sierra's husband and Dylan, he's, from what I know, from what Sierra's told me, is he's a very faithful, um, supportive husband to Sierra and the business with, with the flock. And I asked Sierra, what are the sheep that are his favorite? And he said, Mabel and Barbara, because they don't give him heck. Um, they are very well behaved ewes and they don't jump fences. They give him an easy time. So uh, I knit him a hat. So this, these hats are called these sim um, simple, simple ribbed hats by Pearl Soho. Uh, I knit these quite a bit. It's my go-to. And I knit these hats because Sierra's first hat, or the only hat I've ever knit her, is with Rose's wool. I don't remember if that's been on this podcast before. So Rose is a Dorset Cross U, and Sierra sent me her fleece to see what I could do with it and tell her, give her some feedback about the wool. And I said, this is a beautiful fleece to have in your flock and especially to blend in with the other fleeces in within the flock that need some additional aid with elasticity or increasing the um, yards to the pound that it, that each fleece can yield. So yeah, it's, it's a one by one rib hat um, cast on for your side, it's a free pattern. So uh, these ones I did 108 stitch cast on, this one I did 120 stitch cast on. I never check gauges on hats, but this is fine, and I've done this hat before in this thickness of yarn. These are all about a fingering weight. I think Mabel and Barbara is either sport weight or fingering weight, I can't remember. But let's look at the tones of these hats. Okay, so you got your pearly white, your cold gray, and your warm gray. Just, oh, they're so pretty. I, <laughs> there are some people who are like, you gotta live, add some color to your life. But I'm like, give me all the gray. <laughs> so I, yeah, well, let me see. Since the last time we spoke, I've knit four hats. Um, I apologize if this is not the best place in the house right now, but... It's the prettiest behind me, I think. So I knit those hats and they were, oh, so worth it. That is only three yarns of the 19 different batches that I had. Um, I'll show you a little bit late, later some more of the yarn and some of the locks of the spinner flock. So, all right. I have one more finished object I want to show you. And everybody, is doing this because everyone to know everyone wants to know what a hug is apparently we all need hugs in our lives so I cast it on the ding 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 you guessed it right the Saturday shrug by Jackie from Caddy Jack's knits and I used my Clem Forest which I featured on the podcast at the end of the video it was a bit of fuzz that's Agnes's fluff I was combing her last night She's, she gets her fluff everywhere. So I used um, Undyed, which I always call my Undyed Buttercream. It's a bit of a name. And then I used Very Berry, 
that's this one, and Aztec Gold. And I, for my size of body, I didn't think about this actually. I could have probably added maybe two, four, maybe ten more stitches, and then I could then I could shimmy it down over my shoulders a little easier. But otherwise, it's uh, I'm not gonna. I could put it on. Do you, should I put it on? Yeah, you want me to put it on? Okay, fine. You win. Um, I also I aggressively blocked it to like go this way. <laughs> oh man, look at that hair. Uh, okay. Also, some things I don't care about weaving in ends. I just tie the knots. It's fine, especially this woolen spun yarn. It's not gonna come undone. <laughs> I did weave in like the top and the bottom ends, but not these ones. And I didn't do helical knitting. What did I do? Yeah, I just, I, I mean, I could have carried the yarns up, but I chose to just snip. Anyways, it's all okay. This is a more sturdy um, shrug. I've seen some people wearing the Saturday shrug that is like nice and drapey and they can easily pull over, but I'm not, I'm not a little tiny person. I usually fit large till XL. Anyways, <laughs> I haven't put this on in a while. <laughs> there you go, I shimmied. I did the shimmy, and then I felt the hug. I feel the hug. Um, I guess maybe I just feel more of a hug than you guys do if you did yours loosey-goosey. Um, <laughs> so, I've added some color to my life. Um, right now, I'm preparing for uh, some on-the-road markets, like last year. So I'm doing some samples for when I go to these festivals and I still have more of the Clun Forest in the shop. So I thought I would just do the Saturday Shrug and bring that on the road with me. Yeah, so if you've, now, if you've not knit the Saturday Shrug and you're looking for a hug, um, yeah, go ahead and find something in your stash. It's a great stash buster, really. I don't actually end up doing a whole lot of stash busting because I'm always doing samples or things for my shop. Um, and I'm, I don't often accumulate a whole lot of acquisitions because I'm always working with my yarns. So if I accumulate acquisitions, I can never get through <laughs> a stash. <laughs> um, but I do have one. I'll have to give you a little tour of that sometime. It's just in a big cupboard. Or I might have actually shared it in my first episode. Uh, anyways, I this Clun Forest is a woolen spun DK weight yarn. So usually woolen spun yarns mm, hike up usually a little bit higher in the gauge department. So it's more of a worsted weight gauge. Uh, and I think I would totally do a bulky weight one. Um, when I get to it. Because I have these dreams, but usually the dreams are set aside for doing the things for the for the business <laughs> but otherwise if I didn't I'd be happy with just the one so yeah that was my last finished object I believe let me just do a little scatter little looky-loo yeah that's it I'm gonna take this guy off yeah uh, I blocked this one not in hot water but in warm water and the very berry because it's a really pink heavy colored yarn um you can see a little bit of a, a pink tone to the natural so there was a little bit of bleeding and that just happens even a little bit of the gold the aztec because i blocked it in you know pretty warm water that's going to happen with hand dyed yarns but i'm okay with that it actually adds a little bit of character and hues throughout Um, my husband is off hunting right now. He went for bison with his cousins and the kids are at daycare. And today I've been packing and preparing for my trip. I have to get the kids up tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. Or even maybe 4.30. I need to double check. But oh boy, I'm not looking forward to t waking up my kids to get them to the airport. And knowing my kids, they will probably be wired and not very sleepy. They'll be more excited and probably chatterboxes on the airplane. <laughs> All right. 
me just double check. <laughs> yeah. So my works in progress are all for around the necks and your shoulders. Well, except for one. I am still working on the hound's tooth pullover. I've actually only done a few rows since the last time we podcasted. Um, I might skip over that just because I've only done a few rows. Nothing's changed. Um, it's just that I haven't been able to get to it because I've been working on all these other lovely knits for my dear friend Sierra. Uh, and some test knits. However, I do have a shawl that I cast it on. I shared it in my stories. And what this shawl is, it comes from the 52 weeks of shawls. This is a really wonderful book. It's not like, it is not a collection of shawls that I would knit every single one for myself. And I can see myself passing this book on to someone else or borrowing it out. But the shawl I cast it on is by Evgenia Dupli. I don't know what her nationality is. And it's not the lady in the photograph, but this woman is beautiful. Oh my gosh, look at her eyes. Look at her just like, hello. Yeah. It's called Scarn. Scarn, maybe? Scarn. And it's, it looks uh, asymmetrical, almost. You start at a tip and then you keep getting bigger. No, it's not asymmetrical. It's triangular, I guess. Is that what that is? Is that what? Right here. There you go. Very nice. And so what I'm knitting it in is my hand spun. And I have shown you this hand spun recently. It is the one that I I spun for the Tour de Fleece. And this is the one where I have it's four plies. I filled each bobbin up with it's a huge combo spin. So one singles was all of the fleece samples that I had for my first mill run of low mileage wool. The, come on focus, the second, come on, ply is, um, oh goodness, what was it? A bat from, that I blended myself with CVM, oh gosh, more of my spinaflock fibers. I'd have to go back and look actually what I, <laughs> blended in this again exactly and there was one very green like the not the Grinch cookie monster kind of green um and then one bat of Romney from Melly so we got the flocks samples mm, Melly's Romney the green from Macari yarns and my bat yeah there we go four four singles and it's applied quite a nice ply I really loved it some nice elasticity in there too you're gonna get that with a four ply yarn I think I say that but in my experience so far with the fibers that I work with I get you know a decent amount of elasticity it's nothing like rambouillet or merino but I'm getting like maybe 30% um, elasticity. Anyways, let me see if I can get this up closer so you can see all the lovely colors. And then I'll show you the fabric in a moment. But it's, it's really lovely. Very squishy. I have, um, I think three skeins. But they're not full skeins. Like, here's the, here's a full one. Oops, there's a little DPN there. Here's a full one. Um, I spun them my classic woolen spin, spun long draw. So that's my go-to. And here is our fabric. Here, let's go this way. There we go. So I don't know what it is, but I keep I keep picking the broken rib stitch patterns. Broken rib pattern. I've also got like the cozy classic raglan. I've only like cozy cat cozy classic raglan? No. Cozy cozy cardi by Andrew Maori on my needles. And I've only knit about that much. So, <laughs> but it's all broken rib. And that one's fingering weight. This one too. And then there's like this cute little um, banner in it. So where am I? 
how far do I have left to go? Quite a bit, but like, and it's thicker weight yarn. Um, yeah, and I'm using the needles suggested in the pattern. There's a total of four of those panels. I think I've done two. I have two, so I got two more of these. One, two, I've got two more to go and then it's, uh, that's good. I'm hoping this will block really nice and big. Um, I want it to be a little bit more airy and drapey and this will be drapey because there's so much Gotland in it um, and the Romney as well. It's really lovely. I just, I love these pops of colors. Oh dear, I'm sorry about this lighting. How do we see? Do you, okay, there we go. Do you see all those colors? And it's just subtle. I really love that in my knitting. It gives me so much joy to work through the yarn like and every stitch is different every row is different you see maybe more of a golden yellow and then the next row you'll see more taupey colors from the CVM that I blended in with one of the yarns and <sighs> the green all throughout it just off I think off in the distance it has more of that green there you go my green color it's really nice yeah, so I've been knitting on this every every so often as I can. Um, it's an easy pattern to pick up and put down. So I'm holding this in a bag that I got from Is um, Isabel Goslin. She, I think I shared this on the podcast. So I love this one because we are hunters. So I was like, if I go hunting, I can bring this bag. I won't lose it. <laughs> so it's got this little handle here, all leather that's that is um, produced in Canada. Um, canvas. There's an inside pocket as well. Nice, I think two like deep pockets. It's quite nice. Um, yeah. So that's a Scarn uh, shawl. I'm really enjoying that. Um, and then otherwise, the only other things on my needles are. Um, that I've been actively working on, especially the last few days. Last night I casted these on. This is another set of three mitts, like the ones I'm wearing. But this one is in, this one's in Mix wool. Mick is, was um, a fiber weather on Sierra's, in Sierra's flock. And this past, um, this past summer, there was a predator on their property and spooked uh, Mick, and he was a casualty along with a few lambs. And Mick was, um, it was a really lovely post that Sierra wrote about Mick, but he was, he was her guy. And she could count on him to bring, to get all the sheep to come to her because um, she'd just have to call him and he would come and everyone else would follow along. And Mick is a beautiful fiber, was a beautiful fiber weather. His his wool was um, denser and it's fuzzier. Uh, it was pretty soft to me. <laughs> and he had a lot more squish to his yarn. His fleece as well was a lot more crimp. And, but he had he has Scotland in him as well, and he's yeah he's a really, really good animal, and I'm so sad for Sierra, but I'm gonna do my best to, um, yeah, leave her with some Mick in her life, and I thought Mick on her hands would be perfect because she would pet him, give him all the scratches and scratches and. So yeah, these don't take very long at all to make, so I'm probably going to have one finished tonight and the other one cast it on, and then maybe on the airplane tomorrow I will finish the second one, or on our road trip up to see them on Saturday. So I'm using a 2.75 for the ripping, and then I'm also going to incorporate, hold the bullet please, what is that? I've got this bag here with all of the wools. There we go. I'm going to incorporate her other favorite sheep, which is Frost. Frost is a mature ewe. She's pretty white. This is 100% her wool. And she's a bit heathered. She's got some, she's got some, yeah, 
Heathered is just, it means she's not pure white. So there are some like darker fibers, which you might not be able to see. You may. Um, lovely wool, very, it sounds crisp. That's the best way I like to describe toothy yarn is calling it crisp. So I've got this. I've also got some leftover of Ash. Um, Ash, and Elsa, and Mabel and Barbara. So I was going to take my little leftovers. Here's Mabel and Barbara. <laughs> And I, I know the difference between, hold it, I know the difference between all of these four wolves. <laughs> you might see white and you might see gray, <laughs> but I feel it and I can see the different cool and warm tones and I know exactly what I'm looking at. Actually, all 19 batches, which is kind of funny. Um, all the 19 different batches of each yarn that was made, I, I, can, I can look at it and be like, I know which one that one is. I know what that one is. <sighs> Ask me in two weeks time, that might be a different story, but... So yeah, I'm going to make her some of these fingerless mitts so that she can have Mick in her hands and in her heart. Aww. Okay. You don't mind me gushing over this wool, do you? <laughs> Those are my works in progress. Um, I'm trying to think. Other works in progress that I have is like spinning. I've been doing a lot of spinning on my spindles. Hmm. One of these days I should show you off my spindles. I do have a nice little collection. One of them behind me is a support spindle, which I can show you quickly. This one here, oh gosh. You know, I can't remember. I'm so bad with na remembering names of uh, makers, especially of my spindles. There's a few that I remember. This one came from Australia. This is uh, a really, really beautiful support spindle. And in the last video, I was showing how you spin these. Um, you're adding twist to your yarn by flicking your spindle and drafting. This is a Aida wool and spun yarn. So you add enough twist, make sure it's twist locked like that. And then you wind it back onto the shaft into something called a temporary cop. And then you just keep spinning. So this is my favorite type of spinning on a spindle. So I've been really enjoying that. Just picking up, doing 10, 15 minutes here or there. Um, and I'm just spent. I'm just oopsies. I'm just spinning a bunch of random fibers to really figure out what fibers I enjoy spinning on my uh, support spindles. Um, and this fiber here is Canadian wool that I got from Akari Yarns. She sometimes sources uh, roving from her area where she lives. Um, Rose is, is the dyer's name. And she, I don't remember what the name of this, uh, this braid was, but I got them for uh, initially for blending in with bats. But um, <laughs> Rose is really good at like taking just color and adding them to it like even just like a pop of like a neon like it's the same color with my plants um and so what I did was I took a a portion of the braid and I created these rolags uh just for making I wanted to see how this fiber was in a rolag I probably didn't need to put it into a rolag because it's in here is like Suffolk what were the braids Suffolk Ile-de-France uh maybe Cheviot or Dorset. So it's like a blend of pretty downy down fibers, which are really easy for um, spinning wool in. Um, yeah, so this is probably my newest. So yeah, this is my newest support spindle. I have several of them and I appreciate like a, a thinner shaft or a tip. I like to, yeah, I, my fingers are small and I just appreciate a, um, yeah, a, a, tip, a tighter, oh my word, multitasking, a smaller tip, yeah. And so this is the temporary cop and I can butterfly it off onto my fingers like this and wind it onto down here. 
I won't do that now because that actually takes a little bit of time. <laughs> so this one supports bundle I enjoy spinning on. I'm using it in, I'm spinning it in a bowl that I got from a charity shop or an antique store. Charity antique store. One of those Melissa in Vancouver. Um, I'm also spinning more of this but on a Turkish spindle. So I'm going to bring this one with me on my trip. I wanted to have some options for spinning and I thought my little Turk might be really nice. Look at that. I don't often wind on to a Turk I'm all fancy like this. I don't really care but I was uh, I just decided to slow down the process and enjoy it more because why not? Especially I've been so busy or looking at computers, packaging orders, it just takes time and sometimes it's nice to just slow it down, look at something a little bit differently and appreciate the nuances. So like, look at these colors. Like it's a bright color here, but look at inside here, there's like a blue and a rust and an orange. And when they all come together, you get a, a blending like this. I mean the fiber prep the fiber prep for this versus the Turk is different and so I'm intrigued to see what kind of effective yarn I'm going to get between the two different spindles and the two different fiber preps. So anyways that's a bit of a that's a bit of a sidestep here. Um, yeah so um, I wanted to show you some of the, the locks of, oops, of fiber. Oh, I almost got one of the hats covered in coffee. <gasps> but I didn't. I wanted to show you some of the locks of the next spin of flock. So if you're new here and you don't know what my spin of flock is, um, I have been working with Sierra and her flock of wool for nearly three years now. Um, I started off with one lamb's fleece called Nora. And then the next fleeces I processed were the Tansy Twins, Tansy, who's an Icelandic sheep, uh, Rose, I did Torfall. What else have I hand processed? I've hand processed half of Grim, who is the father to Torfall, but he passed away. Um, and I had a bunch of these other fleeces for the next spin of flock, and there was like eight or nine. Plus I got some Icelandic lambs fleeces for myself that I want to process and make a sweater out of. Um, I just thought to myself, you know, I'm going to burn myself out, I'm going to get overwhelmed, and maybe I'll cut corners, and I don't want to do that, because I want to provide the best thing for those of you who have been enjoying spinning a flock with me. Um, wow. I have the same fleeces from the last times, the last two times, um, with some additional other fleeces. So... When I'm in Alberta, I'll be picking up these, uh, the fleeces that have already been processed into fiber, spinning fiber. Um, but I kept some samples for me. And so Jones is the ram off of Nora, who's my sheepy. And Jones is stunning. He's like, he's like his dad. He's dark and black. Here's, here's a little cloud of his fluff. So I've kept this for for me to show you guys. I wanted to show you ages ago, but I, I didn't want to talk about it too close, sorry, too far away from actually being able to offer it. So he looks just like Torfall, but I can see um, some of his mom in him. So I've seen him carted up and he's nice. He's nice and dark. Oh, it smells good. Um, so we'll be getting Jones back. I named Jones because of Nora. Actually, my favorite musician is Nora Jones. So it was like, Nora and Jones. Oh. Um, and then I mentioned uh, Grimm. Grimm is, was, a, uh, was a registered BFL ram that Sierra got. And he was in the flock for a bit. He sired like Torfall and... Uh, Vader and whoever else I'm not sure but his fiber like oh look at that I'm gonna have a very small amount of Grimm I processed a little bit and kept this little sample 
Phew, excuse me. Um, so I processed a little bit and then while I was processing him and was moving on to Jones, I was like, I, I cannot do this. I can't put all my time into this. I'll be carting into the evenings all day and I won't have time to dye yarn and I'll just be a stressed mess. So I decided to send it off to Rosebud River, River Fiber Mill, who did my first mill run of um, low mileage wool. So I can't wait to get this one back. I have actually spun Grim, but I blended him. Excuse me while I reach over to get this. I um I was going I was going to make some roll eggs for Sierra's daughter Katie to spin, but she's new and I was like this is probably not the best choice for her, so I. I just blended a bat and made it into pulled roving for her. Um, just a bat of just him, like this. But in the, yeah. Anyways, so I had had some roll eggs that I had blended, and just I decided to keep it and send her just just grim. And this one has color. You're probably wondering, hey, that's not Grimm. Um, so this one I actually took Grimm's wool and I blended it with some other fleeces that I had uh, um, dyed. It was Dorset from Revolution Wool Co. in Ontario. And so I took some of the fibers that I had dyed and just blended it on the blending board that I have. And I spun these on my support spindles. We've got a really terrible ply here. <laughs> so what I did was I had two spindles. I center pull balled, center pull balled, plied them. So two di two different bobbins with two ply with uh, two ply on each, and then I plied those together. So this is actually a four plied yarn. But I plied them on my spinning wheel because I don't have a plying spindle, so. I usually just ply on my spinning wheel. You know, it seems kind of weird to like take the time to spin on spindles and then ply on a spinning wheel because it's quicker, but whatever. <laughs> it's fine. I enjoyed the whole process. So yeah, that was fun. Um, this is probably going to end up in my crocheted um, stripy blanket because that's what I do with my spindle, sp my spindle yarns is I add them to my, my scrappy blanket or my, sorry, not scrappy my stripy crochet blanket so that's been fun working on with those and uh, so that was Torfo and that was Grim the other ones are not washed but I wanted to show you what this wool looks like even not washed so at first appearance it looks it looks dirty it doesn't look very attractive but that's because well there's dirt in it there's lanolin and the smell of well you know rolling around in your own doo-doo. Uh, I'm a mom to young kids. Sometimes these words come to me and then I think afterwards. But okay, so Rue is the daughter of Rose. She is, she's so sweet. I cannot wait to see her again. She was pretty shy the last time I was there. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? She's, she's shiny. So Rue's dad is Torfall. And her length is quite nice. So look at that. <laughs> it's so pretty. <laughs> Looks like crinkly french fries, hey? So Rose is a Dorset cross. So Rue would have Dorset bloodline, Gotland, and BFL bloodline in her. I don't know what any sort of, if there's any heritage throwbacks in them or not, but Rue is very nice. And I've seen the fiber in a picture. I mean, I don't know which one she is, but this would come out as white as this rue might have a little bit more mm, buttercream look to her all right torfall we have seen before hopefully the crinkling isn't too much and okay so torfall is was this dark okay so knowing that grim torfall's dad is white well Torfall, I don't mind that he's going lighter, but he has an interesting place right now. He's got like, he's starting to look like his brother. But look at those locks. Oh, Torfall. Oh, Torfall. Little buddy. And he's gotten much lighter. So 
gray and white. He's his uh I'm assuming his fiber is going to come back and he'll be a fiber that will be fairly heathered if you spin it. But mm -hmm. I'm going to be sending off some of these fleeces to get um, tested for genetic lines and health and things like that. So, um, Tansy's the Icelandic, the Icelandic U, and she always twins. She always has twins. I don't think she's ever lambed, or I don't think she's ever had triplets. She may have, but I, they might have not survived. So Tansy is Icelandic. She's re I don't know if she's registered or not, but we think maybe she's also got some Shetland in her because she's she's pretty uh, soft. Though so I don't know. I guess the her cell, the the soft downy undercoat is super nice. But this is not Tansy. This is Tansy's fiber weather. He's a ram, um, and the rams you can't keep all these rams in the flock they can be aggressive and you don't want some whoopsie um, crossover in genetics or or basically incest with animals you don't want that you want a healthy flock of you know not all related um so he has been sent off to the mill and i can't remember if he was the darkest um his sister tess might have been darker I can't remember but the weather the fiber weather apparently was the more showstopper between the two of them um, but the Tansy twins they they um, with Tansy's bloodline she's, she produces really beautiful lambs and their fleeces are so interesting to spin because of the combination of Gotland BFL and the Icelandic so it's it's a very fascinating combination um, Nora, her fleece was much smaller this time because she put a lot of effort into her, into nursing her lamb, who's Jones, and so she's gotten light as well. She used to be like a nice, um, not quite like this, but she used to be a bit lighter. Anyways, so there's, there's Nora, and she's, she'll be like a silvery gray. Always lovely, to, lovely to spin her. She's about, I think she's 73% Gotland. Or 60, 73, yeah. And finally, this is Tess. Tess, yes, she's the one with the darker fleece. Look at that. She, and then she's also got the white in her. So apparently, or usually when Tansy has these twins, they're badger faced, so like black and white, and then their fleeces are also a mix of colors. And oh my goodness, you guys, I cannot wait to see the the fiber all processed. Um, Alex at the mill was able to wind them into bumps. So what that means is it's a, it's not a cone of yarn. That's like a wound up thing of roving. So it'll make it much easier to send it to people for spinning. So yeah, I wanted to show you those because I'm so excited to be getting the spin a flock back. Um, I feel like I was missing somebody. Let me think. Rue Jones, Nora Torkel, Oh, Tansy's fleece wasn't there, but it will be. And then the Tansy twins, so that's seven. And Grimm, so that's eight. There's like eight fleeces that will be available. That's right. These two and that. Yeah. <laughs> well, that whole on. Sorry about that. So, yeah. Seven, eight, eight fleeces to, to spin with me. So, yeah. I usually um, take on a lamb's fleece to process myself. Um... And actually, Jones, sorry, I haven't decided if I'm going to share Jones yet. Usually, usually I process a fleece a year, each year. Jones is probably not in there. I get the lamb's fleeces. Or I might take a little bit of Jones and a little bit of Rue. I haven't quite decided yet, but I'll keep you updated. <laughs> All right. Oh, moving on. Um, I wanted to just, yeah... I think I've basically talked about my low mileage quite a bit. Um, I have lots of dreams with it. My my hope is that I can continue to buy the whole clip every time there's a sharing. This last one I did, I bought the whole clip, minus some fleeces that are reserved every year for other people. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm over the moon. I wish that 
I wish that I could be doing low mileage all the time, but they only shear twice a year, and the flock is only a certain size, and it's not it's not the thing that helps me grow this business. I also have to hand dye yarn, and I also need to go on these fest to these festivals and other things. So I don't want to keep you too much longer, but I did want to quickly show these male ends, and as well as talk about just briefly, not in the best way, two books that I read. So I've got a salad bowl here. <laughs> full of all my mill ends um, and what I've done with these mill ends is I've caked up where is it I've caked up a, a giant look at this a giant cake so every 19 different batches of yarn is in here let's go this way 19 different batches of yarn and you can see the really dark here into the white. Although, I'm so sorry, this lighting. Um, you guys, I'm sorry. I hope you're still here. <sighs> a very, of a, a varying amounts of weight of yarn. So this thread right here is fingering weight and I'm currently working through Frost's yarn, I think. Um, so the mill ends are what's left over on the cones when after they've finished plying and making skeins, there's uh, there's some yarn left over on the cones. So then they wind those off into smaller skeins and send them to me. If there are a certain amount of if there are a certain amount of yards, then they'll put a sticker on it saying that's that there's a certain amount of yards. If there's like less, then they just don't put anything on it. They'll label it or add it to the bag. So what I've done is I just wanted something that I could have on the go with this trip that I didn't have to think and with the kids because John won't be there with me I just wanted um, something easy to work on that I could just pick up and put down whenever and I, I love to spin and sorry I love to knit so I need my fingers to do something like if we're in the car or late at night or whichever I just need something to bring with me while I'm down visiting my dad and with the kids I just I didn't want to like do so much knitting and then discover I made a massive mistake on something and have to frog back. I mean, it's not the end of the world, is it? But still, I just wanted something easy. I've been doing a lot of broken rib and ribs, fabrics and color work. I just wanted something to help me relax. So, yeah. That is the mill ends. It is really cool to look at. It's it's much like the, the fade that I um, sold out of. Thank you everyone who shopped that update. Um, there's, there's, you haven't missed out, there's low mileage wool in my shop. So if that's something that's calling your heart right now, there are some of this yarn still available. Not the black um, and not the fade kits, but certainly get your hands on Ash and Frost. Elsa or Mabel and Barbara anyways yeah so that is a project I'm bringing on the road with me along with the free mitts these guys and my little Turkish spindle that's the other project I'm gonna bring with me and yeah the two books that um, I've read or listened to this month one is called The Golden Thread. I meant to look up the author, but I will link them down below. And the other one I just finished is called Women's Work. And it's they're both books about the history of textiles in the world and how they've impacted the world. The Golden Thread talks about through the eras and even up to rocket ships and basically the history of thread um, and how that's changed and affected the world and um, how we look at our like I'm sitting in a chair that is woven from thread that was made in, an, in a factory and it talks about before there was a factory before the industrial revolution these threads were made in home in a small small production at home and it was the women's work to do with some men involved and then the other book is uh, Women's Work, which also talks about 
a lot more a lot more history in it I would not be able to summarize it very well um, but something that I really took from the book was at the very end the author is talking about people who are lo looking to get into the world of spinning and Yeah, the, the craft of spinning. And the quote that I was struck by was, was this. She says, the hardest thing to notice is what isn't there. So when people begin their spinning journey, they create a skein of yarn. They, what you see here is color. What you see here is a squish. What you see here is a twist angle. But there are things in this you don't see. And until you knit with it, until you weave with it, until you have it running through your fingers, you really don't know. And so that's the mystery of this whole thing in spinning yarn or knitting or whatever, is the hardest thing to notice is what isn't there. So um, I just wanted to share that quote with you because if you are somebody who is going down the road of learning how to spin or how to knit or whatever, um, to give yourself grace and patience and kindness to yourself because you are learning how to read something that isn't there. You can be given tools and information on how to calculate what might be of that yarn you're creating or the fabric you're creating. Um, but until you actually put it to practice and you have repetition, um, that that is the hardest thing is to notice what's not there, to learn a way of looking at something differently rather than the end product that you desire. So yeah, I really want to encourage those of you who are learning to spin to just embrace the mind of a learner. I often share that phrase. Um, if you want to get the fancy colorful yarn, it's this one especially, this kind of down fiber is great for um, drafting. Uh, it's toothy and it wants to be with each other, but also the color is fun. It will help you learn your twist angle and how color play works. But you can also just get some plain old white fiber, black fiber, and learn to spin. And give yourself patience. So um, those were two books that I wanted to share about. And then finally, I did want to share a few acquisitions. And this acquisition is very special to me. Um, Alex from Rose, Rosebud River Fiber Mill was part of my introduction to the experience of getting milled yarn done. And our mills in Canada all work under their own timelines based on staffing, uh, hours in the day, many of them have their own sheep that they, uh, that they care for. Sometimes you're ill, sometimes things don't go the way that you need to, or maybe Maybe the climate is drier when you need it to be humid, or maybe the climate is humid and you need it to be drier to process certain fibers. So um, I subscribe to Alex's monthly subscription club subscription. And why did I do this? I don't need more yarn. Um, I did this because I wanted to support Alex and to enjoy yarn from her that is grown from her flock and produced in her mill. I'm also doing it so that I can learn more about her processes, um, what she can do with the yarn. Currently my yarn's been getting sent out to Wellington Fiber Mill in Ontario and the reason for that is because it fits my timeline and I can have two mill runs done a year. And that's what I want for this flock because I, I want to continue to keep buying these fleeces. And so that works for me. Um, so these yarns, this was the first month I got, which was, it's 100% wool, but it comes from uh, a ewe on the property. I think I ended up calling her Esther. I got to name the sheep, I think. Or at least off, I, I at least recommended the name Esther because they called her E. And it's Ile de France, which is a breed. And Blueface Lester. So I think Alex has a fair amount of BFL sheep in her flock. So this one was a Aaron to bulky weight yarn. It's quite nice. I can see myself making a hat. And it's nice and soft but with a little bit of rustic feel. Um, the next yarn was this one which 
the color and the characteristic of the yarn is very familiar to me and why that is is because it's a BFL lamb. Um, every yarn that you get sent, um, which by the way I'm not getting paid to do this or whatever, I'm sharing legitly something that I care about and want to support because it's our Canadian mail and shepherds. Um, this one came from, oh right, a BFL lamb. It's not just one, it's multiples, but she couldn't remember whose, whose it was, so she had to just put BFL lamb. This is a lovely yarn. It's got some sheen and a warm tone to it. And she might even have some more of this in the shop because it was actually not originally for this club, it was for something else. There was some left over. And then this month's one, she sent a uh, monochromatic kind of dyed yarn, which is the black faced use in on the property that she has um this one she she said in the letter that she basically made the same yarn as the month before so then she threw it into a pot of dye so the black faced use i'm assuming would be bfl use or crosses but what i love so much about this monthly subscription is every card that she sends every piece of or every letter that she writes, she, um, you can hear the heart in it. It's really lovely. She says, firstly, I want each of you to know what, what an enormous impact this flock subscription is having on me and my business. It's a game changer having reliable monthly income like this. As you may know, there's been a lot of talk lately about the state of the wool industry in Canada. There are big problems. From finding shearers, farmers, getting enough money for their wool, to covering shearing costs and husbandry, all the way to processing. The cost of processing and the apparent lack of processing in Canada are problematic. There are good reasons for that. The cost of equipment, the labor expenses, eat the entire operating budget. Our little mill runs on more passion than money. It's a tough business to be in, but I believe in it. Um, and when I read those words, I was like, I believe in you, Alex. <laughs> I want to be supportive of her. I've met her once. I'm going to go see her next Monday at the mail when I go to pick up the spin of flock. And I'm thrilled. And so that's just a, that's the first paragraph. And then she goes on talking more about the yarn and how she would like to see the goal. She says the goal is to send out 300 per month with the new program. 300 additional subscriptions would secure, would secure the financial viability of our processing business into the future and allow me to give some farmers better prices for their wool because um, farmers don't actually get great prices for their wool um, I pay IPA, IPA I pay Sierra exactly what she asks for and no, no less and I would love to pay her more um, but at this time I can only pay her what she what she's asking and not anymore um, so I thought I would share this lovely monthly subscription and uh, maybe I would, maybe I'll be happy to give one of these as a giveaway. Let me know which is your favorite yarn, and I would be happy to to include one in the low mileage wool make along. So, if you have joined us for the low mileage uh, make along, I encourage you to seek out wool within your area that you live, um, or if you would like to try my low mileage wool. Um, if it's now available for you to make plans for and um, yeah there's there's so much wool and if there's any ways that you can find um, sorry if there are um, ways in which you can support your local fiber mill or farmers um, even if it's helping on I don't know sharing day or I don't know ways to help them then I encourage you to, to reach out and, and find some ways. And if Rosebud River Fiber Mill and their subscription is something that um, touches your heart and you'd like to subscribe for a little bit, you don't have to commit to a whole year. You can turn it off and on whenever, but um, I think that's a nice way to help support um, a fiber mill is in, in the monthly subscription. And I plan on sending more fleeces to, to her to get processed. So yeah. I'm going to leave you there. Um, it's gone on for a little bit longer than I had anticipated, but I know that you guys are here for all the wool and all the all the inspiration, so I hope that you can enjoy the footage that I'll share at the end of this 
episode of me with the flock on cheering day and I hope yeah I hope to see you next time and may your crafting hearts just be overwhelmed with joy and inspiration as you head on into spring so we'll catch you next time and I love you all if you've enjoyed this episode you know feel free to like, subscribe, hit the bell button, and um, so we can stay up to stay in touch. And any comments, I love to reply to. And I I really appreciate you being here and supporting this channel. You can check out the description box below. I have included a Ko-Fi account if you feel like supporting that way. I've turned off monetization, and um, yeah, I'm just tired of that. <laughs> I'm here for you. So um, we'll see you next time. Have a wonderful weekend or week, whatever day it is that you're watching this. Bye for now. Hi, Molly. Fall. Mister. You. Joe.
day, so they've not really been fed. They're just obviously hungry, so they're eating what they can off the ground. There's Tansy coming over to me. This is Rose. She was uh, one of the other first fleeces I ever processed. And she now gets put into the mill run. Here's Ash. She's always going to come in for the, the pets. Hey, you. A beautiful fleece. That's Rue over there. She's Rose's daughter. Rose is the one with the black spot. But, uh,